Hello, welcome back to Miss Hing lesson today. How are you? I'm good. So let's start our round on six today with Unit Four, Lesson Four A, Reading. Let's continue our reading part. Now open page seventy three. In the previous lesson, you have learned about how the people in Paris and in Hanoi celebrate their holiday. So, what are we going to learn today? Everybody, look at the pictures on the screen, and tell me, what is the topic that we are going to learn today? Yes, we are going to talk about the weather. Let's listen to each sentence, and what do they mean? It's hot. It's hot. So if the temperature is thirty to thirty-five degrees Celsius, I would say is hot. Trời rất là nóng. For the second one, it's warm. It's warm and sunny. Normally, we will have this weather in the spring. It's warm and sunny. Thời tiết rất là ấm áp và nhiều nắng. Number three. It's cloudy. Cloudy. Các em đã từng nghe một đoạn rap này chưa? Trời hôm nay nhiều mây cực. It means there are many clouds in the sky. I would say cloudy. Trời nhiều mây. Number four. It's raining. It's raining. So when you see some water falling down from the clouds in small drop, that is rain, and I can say it's. Raining. Next, it's snowing. It's snowing. In Vietnam, we can't see the snow, but if you travel to some countries such as the UK, the USA, in the winter, you can see the soft white bit of frozen water falling down from the sky, and then you can make the snowman. Do you want a bit of snowman? And finally, it's cold. So in the winter, it's very cold. Thường vào mùa đông thì trời lạnh, đúng không nào? So now let's listen and repeat. It's hot. It's hot. It's warm and sunny. It's warm and sunny. It's cloudy. It's cloudy. It's raining. It's raining. It's snowing. It's snowing. It's cold. It's cold. Okay. So now, can you look at six pictures and six sentences once again, and tell me what do they have in common? Game hãy quan sát xem sáu câu này có một đặc điểm gì giống nhau nhỉ? Wow, that's right. In the beginning of the sentence, we have it is right, and after that, what do we have? Yes, for the first picture, the second picture, the third, and the last picture, we'll have it's plus adjective, and for picture number four and five, we have it's and then verb in. Khi các em nói về thời tiết, trong tiếng Việt chúng ta hay thường bắt đầu bằng chữ trời, trời nắng, trời mưa, trời nóng, trời ấm áp, vân vân. Thì trong tiếng Anh chúng ta không bắt đầu bằng chữ sky đâu nha, mà chúng ta sẽ bắt đầu bằng chữ it. Nếu các em sử dụng những tính từ thì chúng ta sẽ có mẫu câu it is và những tính từ như is hot, is warm, is sunny. Còn nếu đằng sau it's là động từ và sự việc đó đang diễn ra thì các em nhớ thêm in vào động từ đấy nhé. Ví dụ, trời đang mưa kia, it's raining. Tuyết đang rơi kia, it's snowing. Good job. So now let's play a little game. Please don't look at your notebook and you have to say the sentence immediately when I choose one of these pictures. Are you ready? Let's go. Here, what's the weather like? Oh, good! It's cold. It's cold. 
What's the weather like in this picture? Wow. It's hot. It's hot. It's opposite to is cold. What's the weather like in this picture? Good. It's cloudy. It's cloudy. What's the weather like in this picture? It's snowing. It's snowing. What's the weather like in this picture? It's raining. Good job. And what's the weather like in this picture? It's warm and sunny. Very good. So now let's practice more by using two structures: it's plus adjective and it's plus verb. -ing. So in our country, in Vietnam, what's the weather like in the spring, summer, autumn, and winter? Before you answer, please listen to the example. In the spring, it's sunny. In the spring, it's sunny. So, if you want to answer this question, please follow the structure in and then the season. In the spring, in the summer, in the autumn, or in the winter. And after that, it's. And then you have to choose the correct adjective to replace sunny. Để trả lời được câu hỏi này, các em hãy sử dụng mẫu câu in cộng với một trong bốn mùa. Sau đó các em sử dụng it's cộng với một tính từ chỉ thời tiết phù hợp với mùa đó. Let's go. Time's up. Can you tell me what's the weather like in the summer? It's hot, right? In the autumn, it's cloudy. How about the winter? Yes, in the winter, it's cold. So now, what's the weather like today in your place? I'm living in Ho Chi Minh City. And what's the weather like today? Oh, it's cloudy. I love it. Now, let's search online and say what the weather is like today in Brasilia, Cairo, London, Los Angeles, Madrid, Moscow, New York, Rome, Paris, and Tokyo. Let's get started. Have you finished? Can you tell me what's the weather like today in these places? Well, you have searched a lot of useful information about the weather. Let's listen and check. In Brasilia, it's cloudy. In Cairo, it's hot. In London, it's raining. In Los Angeles, it's hot. In Madrid, it's hot. In Moscow, it's cold. In New York, it's raining. In Rome, it's warm and sunny. In Paris, it's cloudy. And in Tokyo, it's warm and sunny. Okay, now let's see the answer. Ta-da! So, can you tell me what are the two places where it's warm and sunny? Yes, in Rome and in Tokyo. In which places the weather is hot? Right, in Los Angeles and in Cairo, and also in Madrid. Perfect! Let's move to speaking part. What can you see on the screen? On the left? On the right? Good job! So, on the left, we can see four pictures. The first picture is the parade. I can see many people on their horses. The second picture is the Eiffel Tower, and people are watching the fireworks in the sky. So picture A and picture D, can you tell me where do these things happen? Paris, good job. And picture B, wow, this picture is very familiar to us. When Ted Holiday comes, we can see the lion dance. And the last picture. Wow, it's delicious. People are eating bánh chưng. So, picture B and C. In which country can we see these two images? 
Sure, in our country, in Vietnam. Now you are going to listen and read the messages from Cheryl and Katie. Cheryl is in Paris, France, and Katie is in Hanoi, Vietnam. Now let's start. Holiday fun. Hi, Tony. We're having a great time in Paris, France. Today is the 14th of July. It's Bastille Day, and people are celebrating it with parties and parades. They hang flags everywhere and dress up. It's warm and sunny here. Oh, guess what? There are fireworks at midnight. I can't wait to watch them. See you soon, Cheryl. Hi, Susan. I'm writing to you from Hanoi. People here are celebrating Tet, the Lunar New Year. Locals decorate their houses with colorful flowers, and family members eat together and visit relatives. Children usually get money in a red envelope as a present from their parents or elder relatives. Right now, we are eating ban chong. This is a steamed square cake. It is delicious. We are going to see a lion dance performance later. See you next week, Katie. Wow! So we have learned that in each place, like in Paris or in Hanoi, we can see many things, and people do many things to celebrate the holiday. So now, please read the two messages again. Underline some important events and some keywords to help you to tell the class how people celebrate each festival. So let's read these two messages again and underline together. In the first message, we can underline the keywords Bastille Day. What do they do in that day? Parties, parades. What else do they do? Hang flags, dress up, and fireworks. How about in Hanoi? We can see the name of the festival, Tet, and the meaning of Tet means the Lunar New Year. What do they do in the Lunar New Year? Decorate houses, eat together, visit relatives, get money, red envelope. Eating bun chung, a lion dance performance. So these are important keywords, important events that happen in two festivals. Now let's listen to the sample, and then it's your turn to tell the class how people celebrate each festival. Here we go. On Bastille Day, the French have parties and parades. They hang flags and dress up. There are fireworks too. In Hanoi, people eat ban chung during Tet. There are lion dance performances. People decorate their houses with colorful flowers. So now it's your turn. Please use the keywords that we have just underlined together and tell the class how people celebrate each festival. Let's go. Wow, you're such a good student. So we have learned that each festival in Paris and in Hanoi have many exciting things. So my question for you is that, what makes each festival exciting to you? Kem cảm thấy hứng thú nhất với sự kiện nào trong hai lễ hội này? Okay, to me. Bastille Day sounds exciting to me because I love the parades, and Tet sounds exciting to me because they have lions dance performance. How about you? Well, thank you for sharing. Now let's go to the last part. 
Just imagine that you are celebrating a festival in your country. Write an instant message to your English friend about it. Please write about the place, the weather, the name of the festival, and what the people do and what you are doing. You just write about fifty words. Bây giờ Kem hãy tưởng tượng ở Việt Nam đang có một lễ hội. Kem hãy viết một tin nhắn khoảng năm mươi từ để nói về lễ hội này, giống như tin nhắn của Cheryl và Katie. Trong tin nhắn các em hãy viết về nơi chốn, thời tiết, tên của lễ hội, người ta làm gì trong lễ hội và em làm gì trong lễ hội. Trước hết chúng ta hãy cùng nghe một bài mẫu các em nhé. Hi Jordan. I'm having a great time in Hanoi. It's warm and sunny today. I'm here for the Hung Pagoda Festival. People visit the pagoda to pray for themselves and their family. Today we are going to the Hung Pagoda on a boat. I can't wait to see it. See you soon, Anne. So now let's listen again and complete the message with the words below. Hi Jordan, I'm having a great time in Hanoi. The first one, time, correct. It's warm and sunny today. It's warm and sunny. I'm here for the Hung Pagoda Festival. People visit the pagoda to pray for themselves and their family. Today we are going to the Hung. What? Today. Pagoda on a boat. I can't wait to see it. I can't. Way to see it. See you soon, Anne. And the last word must be soon. So now let's take a look at this message and find out what you are going to write in the message. First, you will start by writing hi, and then the name of your English friend. Đầu tiên các em sẽ bắt đầu bằng từ hai cộng với tên của người bạn đến từ nước Anh. Sau đó các em xuống hàng và đề cập nơi chốn đang diễn ra lễ hội trong câu đầu tiên. Tiếp theo các em sẽ nói về thời tiết. Các em hãy sử dụng công thức it cộng với những tính từ phù hợp với thời tiết nơi này. Câu tiếp theo các em sẽ nhắc đến tên của lễ hội trong bài này. Bạn này đang tham dự lễ hội chùa Hương. Câu tiếp theo các em sẽ nói về những hoạt động mà người ta làm trong lễ hội này và bạn làm gì trong lễ hội. Và để kết thúc tin nhắn của mình, các em sẽ ghi câu See you soon xuống hàng tên của mình. Now it's your turn. Let's take a pen and a notebook and write down the message to your English friend. Let's get started. Good job. Now, just imagine I'm an English friend. Can you send a message to me? Let me read. Wow, interesting. All right, we have finished Unit Four, Lesson Four A. For homework and more practice, remember to review all of the language points we have learned today. Do the homework on your workbook, page thirty-eight. And access at duhome.com.vn for more practice. That's it for today. Thank you for watching my video. Goodbye, and see you in the next videos. Bye.